<laughs> I love it. Amy, how are you? I'm good. Good. And look, since we greet each other, welcome y'all, everybody else, to the cup ringside where you get the best seat in the house on all things wrestling. And welcome to the Cup Network, period. Um, I am Lana, your resident evil diva, and I'm here to give the tea, spill the tea, drink the tea, because you know I love me some tea, per. And if you have some tea, you know what to do, hit me up. I am currently just drinking on some water, because hydration is important. Look at that condensation. You know it's cold. Right out the fridge, they are frosted. So good. So good. The best. But if I was drinking anything else, maybe some hot and spicy. I'll be drinking out of my cup mug. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Get your cup mug at lonergiescreations.etsy.com. Get your cup mug or any of our cup merch. Go check that out. Um, and um, we do ship domestically here in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And we are back to shipping internationally. So these ship, there are no excuses anymore. So get your cup merch, period. The link will be in the description below. Period. Uh, I am Amy. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. Uh, I am sipping on a Diet Coke currently. Um, this was honestly, I'm looking forward to talking about this SmackDown because it was full of wrestling, uh, mm -hmm. something we we have not had a lot recently. We've had a couple of smatterings of matches, uh, but it was really nice to have a fully stacked SmackDown to talk about today. So let's Absolutely. get to it. Absolutely. King and Queen of the Ring is right around the corner. And so everything is all about the King and Queen of the Ring. And so we had, a, like Amy said, a, a show packed full of just matches to qualifying for the tournament, which is great. But before we jump into that, let's take care of some business. You're here. We see you. We appreciate you. I see y'all watching. I'm glad y'all enjoyed y'all backlash. Uh, recap last time and then the weekly shows i saw y'all watching i appreciate y'all views but um hit the subscribe button that's what's lacking y'all need to subscribe if you're gonna watch us subscribe subscribe to this channel here hit the notification bell because we do put out content every week about raw raw we got a raw take we got the who's next on nxt and we have laying the smackdown of course the a show so you should come check this out, subscribe, do all the things. And then, of course, in between there, we have our mid-card videos, which is like our top tier list, our top 10 list, our documentary uh, discussions, you know, things like that. So be sure to check this out. Of course, in all the PLEs, we talk about all of them, which we'll be talking about the King and Queen of the uh, King and Queen of the Ring tournament in Saudi coming up probably next week because it's coming up in two weeks. So we'll be here to talk about that as well. And if you just happen to be a fan of drag or drag race of any kind, we have a channel for you at The Cup Pod. You can go over there, check that out, hit the subscription notification bell. And while you're there, hit the join button to join our membership channel so you can get early access and um, exclusive content from across all four of our channels. So you can do that, hit that membership, and then we'll have that stuff for you. Or if you have to be a fan of Patreon instead of YouTube membership, we have a Patreon for you too. All those links will be in the description below. If you're a fan of reality TV, we got a, 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 a channel for you. I can talk eventually. Um, it is <laughs> at the Cup TV where we talk all things reality TV from Survivor, Amazing Race, Big Brother, the GOAT, which is out now, and we're going to start talking about that. And we might even start talking about some scripted TV. I mean, because Bridgerton is coming back, and I am a oh. huge fan. So oh. we, might have to stop talk, in. Oh. we might have to talk about some scripted TV because it's the Cup TV, so period. Um, and also, if you're a fan of Eurovision Song Contest, which is happening right now as we're recording, and there's a lot of content coming from you on that channel. Go to the Cup ESC, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You do not want to miss it. We have boots on the ground in Eurovision right now. Uh, Anissa and, and Lewis are there enjoying the show and have a lot of content coming your way. So check all of that out on the Euro, on the Eurovision Song Contest channel. So yeah, we go. We got all that stuff out. Almost under five minutes, but all right. Uh, SmackDown, May 10th. 2024. King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring is happening. And so we had a lot of 
um, matches to get through. All all these matches are for the tournament, so that's why it's so big. But we got our first, well, at first, we start the show off with uh, Nick Aldis coming out, and he introduces Cody Rhodes. Cody comes out, and we're like, okay, cool. He's going to give his promo, whatever, you know, the, the, the champion protocol. I'm trying protocol. to be less of a hater, Lana. I really I, am. I, I, I know you are. I can see it. I can see it, and I understand oh, it. It's like seething. I'm trying. I really am. I mean, but it's like, sure, he's doing this. He, mm-hmm. You know, he's first-time champion. He gets to come out and do his little promos. I'm like, okay, let's give the champion his promo, whatever. But then we come to find out it's not a regular promo for Cody. It's actually Nick Aldis informing him that of that he has another challenger because he knows that Cody wants to be a fighting champion and he wants to be out there as much as possible. And so he's going to have to fight at the King of the Ring, King and Queen of the Ring tournament in two weeks. And his opponent is going to be Logan. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sis, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with Cody. I really don't. Um, he looked nice. His suit was really nice. He looked great. I don't know what it is about. Like, I wish he would go back to the black hair because I feel like it's more suited for him. And this blonde is weird. It clashes so much with everything he's wearing. He always looks fly. And then I'm like, why do you have this like crazy? Bl- it's just giving master race vibes. I don't like it. <laughs> um, I should not say that. Um, but it's it's just what it's giving, and I don't appreciate it. I just I I miss his natural hair, and I also think that it suits him better. Um, and I think as like the face of the company, it would suit him better. But uh, you know, just personal opinion. Uh, I, mean, I I get it, and and I agree with you. And that's the problem when I'm like, oh, I hate that I agree with you, but I do. Um, and I do like him with his natural dark hair because it looks mm-hmm. more natural. He looks, looks, he looks younger, first he, off. He, yes. And he looks hotter. Um, and he's way better looking with it. Like, yes. But I like, get what he's trying to do with the hair because of his dad. and the, I get it, but mm, I wish Brandy would be like, girl, no. No. Just no. It's a chop. But it's fine. Um, I don't know. This is not the match that I'm going to be looking forward to at the next PLE. I'll tell you right now. This is going to be while I'm up making snacks. Like, I'm not. <sighs> you have Cody, who I'm I'm kind of already apprehensive about. Um, and then you put him with, like, the least liked person on the roster. I understand why you're trying to build him up as this big baby face and have people really be able to rally behind him. And yes, this is a great way to do that because Logan Paul is absolutely hated. I don't think that they did a good job of letting us know if both belts were on the line. Um, yeah, they didn't. I don't think it is. Because um, really, I like Cody was making points about saying like, oh, if I won the U.S. title, I'd be a Grand Slam champion. And Logan's bragging about wanting to hold both belts. And I'm like, so are both titles on the line? What is happening here? That is what I was wondering. I was like, who are telling us this? Um, also, this was a very long segment considering we have six matches to get through. I was like, can y'all get to the point? Like, this could have been an email. Like, move it along, bro. Like, literally, it could have been like, Logan probably didn't need to be there, honestly. It could have been like. And I didn't need five minutes of him telling us about how great Prime is. I really but- didn't. Okay, this problem is disgusting. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it. It's nasty. I tried it. Don't like it. Gross. But um, it's... I feel like Nick Aldis could have been like, Cody, your opponent is going to be Logan Paul. Okay, so that's happening. And then Nick left and Cody be like, okay, well, what do you want to talk about? Logan Paul, I'm coming for you. Blah, blah, blah. And then he could have moved on. We could have moved. We had six matches that we could have used that time. Two minutes, just say, Cody, uh, you want to be a fighting champion? Here's your opponent. Have Logan Paul's music hit. Have him come out. Have them hold the titles up against each other and, and go me. to black and set up the next match. You didn't need Absolutely. 15 minutes of these two, like, stroking each other, their own <laughs> ego. Right. 
It was, it was, I don't care about either one of y'all. So this just wasted my time. Like, yeah, it was kind of, it could have been an email. They could have moved that along much quicker. And it showed in some of the matches later on how this took too much time. And then these matches had to rush. Like, promo should never outdo time when it has, when it's not a good promo. And this wasn't the best promo. It was kind of like, whatever. But, they knew, and then like they didn't even hit each other. Like it was like it was nothing. It was like nobody hit nobody. It was just we just all right. We talk talk talk, and then we walk away. Like boom. And it's like the same thing we always hear said towards Logan Paul about oh you only, you always need the brass knuckles blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Like the same back and forth like that we see for the two of these all the time. Oh you thought you finished your story? Like we've heard this, and right. we've heard it better by other heels. We don't need to redo this. Uh, oh, I didn't. Uh, my finger just ha- so happened to quickly go up. I don't know when you said we've heard it better. I don't know why my finger just popped up like that. I don't know. Yes, I do. Because I Roman always <laughs> said it better. Roman said it better, period. But okay. Um, anyway, so we finally get to what we want to see. The first match of the night was between Naomi and Nia Jax, which, number one, I hate because I want both of these first people to advance in the Queen of the Ring tournament. So I was like, Ill, stupid, gross. I hate it, but <clears throat> but I love it for them because I love them. And um, but this it was it was they they both was coming out like throwing throwing jabs and getting getting in it getting in the mix. And um, it was it was what we thought would be it because Naya has been on like on her game since she's been back, and I've appreciated watching the growth from Naya, and she's been really, really good. So I'm not mad at the outcome of this match. I'm upset because I want both of them to move on and be in the, you know, in the tournament. But this was a good match for me. I enjoyed watching the dominance of Nia Jax, and I enjoyed watching Naomi just scrapping back and doing, hitting her shots, because she had moments in this match that were huge moments for Naomi, and it was big, and it was great to show that Naomi ain't no punk, and she's not mm-hmm. just bow down to the uh, immovable object of Nia Jax. Mm-hmm. I think it was a good match. Um, I agree. Um, I think that, well, first off, they both looked great. It was a mother off from the beginning. Oh, like, they, they looked both amazing. looked amazing. I was happy to see Nia's natural hair out. Like, they both just looked great gear-wise. Nia's yeah. looked good. Naomi always looks good. Always. Um, Naomi looked good within the moments where she got to do what she does best, which are like the high flying, the suicide dive, mm-hmm. um, like just incredible. And then it really like sent home the thought process of Naya being like this strong force coming into SmackDown. And yeah. I think she needs that to set yes. the tone for what they're planning to do with her moving forward. So I think this was the perfect setup for both of them. It doesn't make Naomi look any worse off for having lost here. It nope. helps Naya move forward into SmackDown, having set a little bit of um, uh, respect for herself within the space. And yeah, I look forward to seeing the rest of this tournament because the winners are winning. Like, yes. oh, good. Uh, this, this, the women's side for me, it's kind of Oh, it was just the mother off. I was like, Mother's Day, mother, mother, Mother's Day mother. this weekend? Mother. Yeah, we mothers. We're mothers are mothering this weekend. And this this was just so good. And even on on Raw, like I felt like the women's matches were like eating up. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. They're eating, I, I so. honestly feel like we're coming into like a renaissance for women's wrestling. Um mm-hmm. I really mm-hmm. look forward to seeing what what continues with this because I feel like the current roster of women is the strongest it's been in a long time. And just the bar for talent keeps raising. And mm-hmm. they all do as much as possible to support each other in a way where everybody comes out looking like a million bucks. And so, yeah, I'm happy. Okay. Yeah, I mean, too. And not to mention, the, the talent coming up from NXT mm-hmm. is incredible. And, like, I've been watching more and more NXT a lot, especially since we started the channel, because... I've been having a feeling for NXT sometimes, but I've been watching and just enjoying it. Even when I'm not filling in, I just watch it because it's good. And they had this past week, the women really dominated the show, which I'm like, work. I love to see it. And they ate, and like all of them ate. All the women's matches were really good. So the talent that's in NXT now with the talent that's on the roster now, 
even when some decide to leave and retire and or go on to start their families, we are in good hands because we got a good gr group of women coming up behind them. So I am very happy for the women's division and, and WWE as a whole. I think it's going to continue to be, be to be great. And more women who and the more women who see these amazing, talented women in, on the rosters will then go and go and be like, I want to be a wrestler. And we'll get more talent going to the performance center and learning and training and going out there, independent circuits and doing those things and deciding to come to the, to the WWE. It's just going to be good. I love this cycle. I hope it keeps up for us. It's going to be amazing. But it's going to be a good match. It was a good match. Uh, like you said, Nia winning was the right move. It was. It, it just had to happen. And But both of them came out looking good. And speaking of mothers... I would be remiss to mention we do have a new addition to the SmackDown brand, and it's Miss Alicia Taylor from NXT has moved up as ring announcer for SmackDown. So we have mothers on mothers on both shows announcing for Raw and SmackDown. I could not be happier. I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Also, like, this is off topic, but it's something I think bears repeating and mentioning at certain points. Shout out to Sarah Del Rey, um, aka Sarah Amato, who is uh, doing the bulk of the work with training the women's wrestlers for WWE mm -hmm. uh, since, like, 2013 or 2014, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, she's incredible. She was one of my favorite women's wrestlers on the independent wrestling scene for years. She was like the first woman I saw bringing it to men in the Ooh. independent wrestling scene. And I'm so sad she doesn't wrestle anymore, but also I can see the impact she's had on a lot of the women that are coming out of NXT. Like Bianca grew so much under, uh, under Sarah. Mm -hmm. And I can see the difference in Jade even because like she didn't really have a lot of people really taking her under their wing to like help her establish herself better to be not just a squatch mask wrestler. Like she has worked so much and like as a whole, the women's roster has just bloomed and blossomed in such a lovely way with her help. So shout out Sarah Del Rey. Shout out like for real. We love that. And um, it's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. And I can't Period. wait for that to happen. Sorry, um, I know I go off on tangents, but like... Oh, no, that's... Look, we need to shout out people when it's... Give them their flowers when it's due, baby. That's what we do. Right. Just insanely good. Absolutely. So, we had our next match, which was Baron Corbin versus Carmelo Hayes for the King of the Ring tournament. And after they had a brief exchange in the back, Carmelo was like, don't give me no advice, because the last person who gave me advice is no longer in the tournament. And Baron was like... Whatever, you know. My part of that was Carmelo being like, "Oh, when did they call you up?" I was mm -hmm. like, "Damn!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Like he's so fun. He's, a, he's such a good heel that you just love to hate, but he's so <laughs> fun, and I just love to look at him because he's so fine. Oh, he's um, so fine. He's so fine. But yeah, he was just so funny. I was just like, "You're stupid." Like, I was first. I don't remember when they called you up. I stopped watching after they, I was called. Like, who? 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 <laughs> um, yeah, so they got people. They had their little moment, and they came out. And it was good. The chemistry was really good. I think a lot of people are going to be impressed more with Baron Corbin now than they were before. He went to NXT because I think he went to NXT and actually, literally, and he said himself, he went and he grew. He found who he was as a performer, as a, a, a wrestler, and he grew as a wrestler. He was like, you know what? I'm going to stop being these gimmicks. I'm just going to be me. It's just more fun being me. I'm going to be Baron. I'm going to come out here and just show y'all what I can do. And he did that. Like, this was a good match. I thought it was really full of energy between the both of them. Carmelo do what Carmelo do because he's so good at what he does. He just, his spring, that springboard mm -hmm. that he did, oh, it was like, it was near perfection. I was like, if it wasn't perfection, it was the nearest to perfection I've ever seen. It was so good. They had great chemistry back and forth. I, and Carmelo ended up winning by a wall up, though. And I was like, 
That's so cute, villainous move. You just let this man talk all that talk and do all that. And then he was with a roll up. Y'all tripping, but I like it. And I ain't mad. <laughs> I'm anyway. definitely not mad at it. Um, I think they both like really made each other look good in this mm-hmm. match. Like, um, I think they really played to each other's strengths, and you can definitely see the growth that's happened within Baron Corbin. Like, uh, I, when it was not popular to be a Baron Corbin stand, I was a Baron Corbin stand. That is a beautiful man. He's over <laughs> six foot. That's all I need sometimes, baby. Um, so I've been loving him for a long time. He fell off for a bit. He did get lost in gimmicky stuff for a long time. I'm glad that he's coming more into his own again. Um, Carmelo continues to make all of his wrestling moves look effortless. SmackDown is where he belongs. There's literally not much else I can say other than like, welcome home, King. You're happy. I'm happy you're here. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's so good. I enjoy it. It was. I can't even be mad at it, honestly. You, you really can't be with it. It's just so good. Um, it, was, it was a good match. I enjoyed it. And um, they worked. So, up next, speaking of mothers, it's Mother's Day weekend. Mother. So we can we mother some more. And it is Jay Cargill versus Piper Niven. And this is the first time we saw. Jay Cargill going to get somebody who can match her power for power and strength for strength. And I will say, I was entertained and I was impressed by how both of these women just came forward and did it. It was so good. They went back and forth with that shoulder off and was standing there going like, what? You ain't doing nothing? Do it again. Bam, what? You ain't doing nothing? It was so good. I enjoyed it. It, it was, it was just, it was just back and forth, back and forth, and then it was a simple like the match wasn't like built for like produced to be something spectacular where everything's gonna be flying and that it was just we gonna show brute strength, we gonna show power, and then we gonna take you out. It was a simple layout, simple format, but it was entertaining, and I was like, okay, I can work with this. I can work with this. I agree. I think it was a great match. I think that. Um... Due to her booking, a lot of people forget just how talented Piper Niven is. Like, she's an incredible wrestler. There's a reason that they uh, pursued her to sign her. She's incredible. Um, She gets a lot of flack and a lot of uh, jobber losses that I just don't understand. I think she's a great worker. And I'm glad to see she was in the tournament. When I saw she was against Jade, though, I was like, oh, sis, sorry. (laughs) Um, Jade looked great. I think it was, um, when looking in comparison between, um, Jade and Bianca as they're both in this tournament and will butt heads at some point because Mm -hmm. of it. Um, I think it's interesting the way, like, we'll talk about it more after we talk about Bianca's match, but they book Jade in a way where it is about her strength. And this was a great way for them to show that off. I think they made her look super strong the way she effortlessly, effortlessly lifted Piper for uh, her finish um, was just chef's kiss. So Mm -hmm. good. Jade, the mother that you are. (laughs) That's all. It, 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 It was so good. It was so, it was, it was just a good, Balance, and I love that we were able to see more of what Jay can do instead of just going in and squashing and moving. Like, mm-hmm. and folks, it's folks to stop saying, "Oh, if you did these squash matches," but you're right about Piper. Piper's amazing, and people need to start paying more attention to Piper and how good she actually is. But also, um, Chelsea Green, <laughs> she is an icon. Of the month. Of the month. An icon, <laughs> literally, like. She brings so much personality just being <laughs> ringside. Like, I just, I really love seeing her come into her own and come into this character in the way that she has. Mm-hmm. And her being paired off with Piper, I feel like is very good for Piper because yes. um, she doesn't necessarily have, she has the wrestling ability. I don't know if they've given her the opportunity to really show personality in the way yep. she speaks. So partnering her with someone that is, a thousand percent this big personality um, is super helpful. I think, I think they can only help each other grow and 
Um, I look forward to seeing them come uh, for a title shot at some point. That would yeah. be very cute. Uh, That'd be very cute. I, and uh, speaking of Chelsea, she just had a um, main event match on NXT Tuesday. It was so good. We saw Chelsea actually perform in a way that we don't get to see her on the main roster. And me and Donovan talked about it on Who's Next. You should check it out right here. It'd be right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Um, she was, I was like, we don't get to see Chelsea perform like this on the main roster. She was doing, she had a rough rider. And we are like, what? Like she was eating this match up. Her and Roxanne Perez was going back and forth and it was good. It was stuff we don't get to see on the main roster because we so used to seeing Chelsea being a jobber or just being out there for the comic relief of it all. But she got skills and I wish they would show more of her skills on the main roster. Let her actually get out there and get in the mix and perform instead of just being that jobber that is to help somebody else get over. But she is really good, and I really wish we could see more of that. But, yeah, Chelsea's amazing, and I am becoming more and more a fan of Miss Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green! <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. I love, so it. I love it. It's so good. I love it. But on Jade's, as Jade is leaving, walking out, Miss Bianca Belair is coming in, and I was like, yes, they had a moment oh. to celebrate each other. And I was like, I love this so much. Black women, I'm sorry. Women, women, black like, women, black women, black women. <laughs> oh my God. Just watching the way they like big each other up yep. is in incredible. Um, it's always impressive. And this moment, mm -hmm. um, I can't wait. Because eventually, I know they're going to have to be with each other. I can't wait for moments like this to be in the video package before everything goes wrong. <laughs> like, yes. I just know. Like, remember when they were here and now they're here? I was like, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, that's what oh. It's a build up that I can't wait to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, as much as I want them together, I can't wait to when they get to that point where they do have to break apart. Oh, I think it's about to be WrestleMania. Uh, leading season, up to WrestleMania? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be good, man. Look, as Booker T said, it's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be good. Man. <laughs> oh yeah, man. This is gonna be okay. good. But Bianca Belair versus Candice LeRae. Now, this is where I was saying earlier that that promo ate up time that could have been run for a match because this match was way too short for any of these talented queens to show off what they could do. Like, Candice LeRae is an amazing wrestler, and we acting like she don't know how to do what she do. And we all know the EST is the EST for a reason. And then we had Indy Hartwell outside the ring, which I felt like this could have been a really good match. Same old outcome, but a really good match. But because of that long, stupid promo, it ate up time, and they got a short match out of this, and it it just was, it was lacking a little bit because we just saw Jade and Piper do a really good set and have a really good moment and they had a really good match. This match seemed to lack by comparison, in my opinion. Um, uh, I agree. I think that it definitely lacks for time. I feel like they took what they were already going to do and had to condense it into a quicker format. I think if they'd had more time to build on uh, indie uh, hitting Bianca's knee and having time for Candace to actually like break down the knee more and having time with Candace playing into being more of the heel side of things and coming for the weakness of Bianca in that moment would have been nice. Um, I personally have seen matches where Candace LeRae has taken like a, a wrestling boot with uh, thumbtacks attached to it to the face Ooh. like she's an incredible wrestler and the fact that they have dulled mm -hmm. her down so much um since her return has like really aggravated my spirit to be quite honest but um way too short of a match and as i was saying with jade i think they focused a lot of her match on her strength and then with bianca I think if they'd had the time to run the full match, I think they would have leaned more towards the speed aspect of how Bianca is that strength for them and their tag team is the speed, whereas Jade is the, the like the heavy lifting. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it will be interesting to see 
when they end up eventually facing each other if the speed or the strength beats out. Mm, you're right. I can. I'm with you when you're right. I'm with you when you're right. And I just want them to just show more. I feel like this match just got the short end of the stick when it came to the time. And But Bianca winning was the right outcome because absolutely. But I mean, it it wasn't a a difference. It was exactly what was expected, which was Bianca winning. We got there quicker than I would have anticipated. Um, Absolutely. I'm not mad at them not putting their body through crazy work before they're about to do long travels to do a pay-per-view across the world. So um, let Bianca stay as healthy as possible and hold them titles for a long time. Thank you. Work, (laughs) work, work, work. Up next is Angelo Dawkins versus Tomatonga. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we had a quick backstage moment where Solo made it clear. (laughs) The backstage moment, they made it clear that Solo would be turning on Paul Heyman soon because they became, before they came to the ring. I don't know if that is absolutely accurate, but I do know Solo told Paul Heyman that he talked to Roman Reigns and he Roman told him that he was in charge until he came back. So Paul was a little shocked and gooped and gagged that he hadn't talked to Roman, but apparently Solo has. And uh, so it was interesting. It was uh, an interesting segment. It was interesting to me because I don't necessarily know if I believe that that's true. Storyline wise, if Solo even spoke to Roman, I feel yeah. like that's why um, I do think he's going to turn on Paul. Um, mm-hmm. The the hug into it very much read like a Roman mm-hmm. being like, everything's fine to Sammy. Um so and like you so, to Jimmy last week or uh, Jimmy a couple weeks ago. I love right, you. exactly. I love you. Yeah. Um, it definitely reads like they're planning on turning on Paul. Um, but I don't necessarily think that Roman told Solo that he's in charge. I think that eventually is gonna come back that Roman pops up and says, I never said y'all were in charge. Who told you to be running my shit when I'm right. not here? And so I think that he's just taking it into his own hands and saying, I don't have to listen to you. Roman may want to be your lackey and want to be listening to you. And I know it's so disrespectful, but I feel like that's what's going to happen. They're going to make it seem like, oh, Roman needs you. I don't. I got all my people. And then we're going to have the break offs of the bloodline. And it's going to be. But the the start up to that storyline building yes. in that way is starting yes. now, yep. and I cannot wait to see how it plays out. Um, it's already been like the changing and the evolution of the bloodline without Roman has been very interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still in mourning because we miss our king, we miss yeah, our absolutely. travel chief, we, we but um, I'm also very excited to see uh, Tamatanga in this match mm-hmm. and um in his entrance he looked like a fucking star oh, did he not oh like, i already I was... knew he was a star but seeing him on the this big stage i got a little emotional because i'm like mm-hmm. <laughs> yes daddy you get it baby like i was, oh, I was like, I'm sorry it was so good though because i was very glad that we got to see a entrance and not him coming out to solos music it, it just as much as I love Solo's music, I needed Tama to be Tama by himself right. and do his thing. And it was so good to see his entrance. I love the fact that Angelo Dawkins got this opportunity. I wish it would have been under different circumstances because I hate that Bobby Lashley just got injured and that's why he had to step up. But I am glad that it was Angelo Dawkins who got this opportunity to step up against Tama Tonga. And I mean, they were giving it. Like, they were giving. This match was good. I think Tama was taken aback a little bit by how Angelo Dawkins came out the gate. And I don't know if he expected this. Well, I don't know what he expected. I mean, like you have to flip on a dime when you were expecting somebody else and you you had prepared for somebody else, then somebody else has to step in. So you're not like, oh, okay, whew, now I gotta change gears. But it was a good match. It was a good back and forth between the two. And Angelo was giving it. And then it just became what we always expected to become with the bloodline being there and the bloodline giving um, the numbers game of it all because uh, Solo comes and gets on the, the uh, apron, uh, Dawkins knocks him out, 
and then Montez comes and flies through the, and and gets not him and uh, Tamala. Oh, Montez. I, I, I try to be respectful because I respect Bianca, but yeah, like, but oh, okay. She, look, she know, she know, she know, mm-hmm. she know, he know, we know. Um, because we also had uh, a lot of Tamala by the way as well. So I was like, oh, not. All the okay, too much too much fineness in one area is too much for me. And as I'm trying to enjoy a wrestling program, but it was a lot of fineness happening in this in this moment. And uh because I, I think all the men out there was good looking to me. I'm just saying, like all of them. Every single I'm one of them. I'm so glad. And I'm sad I wasn't here last week when you were talking about Tangaloa, but like King. 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 I'm very mm-hmm. excited to see how this continues on. I hope we eventually get Mr. Fatu coming on in. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to send you a promo that this man cut recently, mm-hmm. screaming at the camera. And I was like, scream at me like that, Dad. They're like, let's go. Let's go, baby. Uh, like, uh, oh, Fatu? Uh, yes, Jake. Uh, uh, Jacob? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes. mm-hmm. So, but... I already knew what it was. The fact that we got a job or entrance from Dawkins kind yes. of already set the tone for the fact that y- it was filler. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, they probably would have still done the same with Bobby because, as we've said multiple times, they're not doing much with him right now anyway. Right. Um, I think that spot was already set for Tama Tonga to be winning. So Yeah, I, I get it. But it was good. And then we got the um, – that just like the, that last minute – that last few minutes of the match was like really exciting with the then Montez got spiked and Dawkins got distracted and yeah, all that. But it is what it is. We it was a very bloodline finish. Very bloodline finish. And you know what? I'm never mad at that. No. I'm never mad at that. But they you didn't have it, y'all would be complaining you're bored. So be glad they give you something to watch every week. Stay You're, mad. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> You're, You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> period. I'm just saying. With the bloodline Jones over here, period. I don't care what you say. They're, they can't do no wrong in my eyes. I don't really care. All right. right. Y'all was sitting there worried about, oh, we hate Roman and all this. And then immediately now you, you want to switch up. Now you miss him? Now you miss him? Now you want him back? Now you miss him? What? Hmm? No, he's gone. He's chilling. He relaxing. He doing what he do. And now you have to suffer. But you know who ain't suffering? The real true bloodline fans, because we know better. We know, know. better. And we're enjoying what's happening still with the bloodline. Because who's still the main story of this whole situation? It's still the bloodline. Period. And it's gonna stay that way. And it's gonna for stay very, that way. For a very long time. A very long time. <laughs> Like, look at the material, though. You know what I mean? Like, and they continually bring in the mm-hmm. the talented, like, actual bloodline of these people. All of them have been in wrestling for years. And I'm just very impressed at the effort WWE has put into trying to create a spotlight for an entire lineage of people mm-hmm. that are more than deserving of this spot. Like, they're mm-hmm. all incredible. They're all fine as hell. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. I could say all day how excited I am about how many of them have recently started popping in. And bring them more. Bring them all out. We want them all. We ain't even brought in. We ain't even, talk, we ain't even talking about the women of the bloodline yet either. We ain't even, right. we ain't even brought the women of the bloodline into the bloodline story. If you really wanted to, oh, man, y'all better shut up. Just stop. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. We're giving you what you want. You're giving you what you can handle right now. I, I, Let's move on to the main event. Yeah, actually, whew, we better be on. We're gonna be here all day for about it. Okay, my main event, which was a banger, by the way. I enjoyed this match very much. It was the phenomenal AJ Styles versus the Viper Randy Orton, and you put those two men in a ring. You know it's gonna be good. Baby, this was good. Number one, they took all the time. They had 20 minutes for this match. So they took their time, even in their entrance. AJ took his time. Randy took his time. 
It was good. We had a a move of a, 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 a continuation of Lionel well, France from backlash because now I think the U.S. get feeling in the feelings that we were called the worst crowds in wrestling because more Leon friends. I, I'm still there. That crowd still outside exactly. every crowd you've ever seen. The only crowd that has come close to that was back Puerto there. Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Because Puerto Rico's turn out, I'm telling you. Like, I think it's out. just it's it's an international crowd and like mm-hmm. yes it's it's a territory of um, of the US so it's not like international in that way Puerto Rico but they don't get wrestling they that don't often. get it exactly. and France also doesn't get it that often exactly. and they are big sports people like they watch football like soccer football a mm-hmm. lot and it is a big deal there to have sports be a part of their culture mm-hmm. and it is still so prevalent there the love of wrestling and they don't often get the opportunity to celebrate that the way they're around the U.S. Like they mm-hmm. travel. I could go twice a year at least to MSG yep. and see wrestling there. Yep. Um, I could go probably four times a year if I want to stay on the Eastern Seaboard and see yep. it in within New York. Like it's not new to me. For right. them, it is a large event, and it's yep. something that doesn't happen often. So they're going to turn out. So I understand people saying, "Oh, it's such a great crowd." I'm like, they're just excited to be here, bro. Like. <laughs> They really are, and I love watching it. But boy, it was so good. It was but so yeah, good. So. But yeah, but yeah, it was good. We had a great match. Wendy and AJ, they told her they, they just they just turned it out. Like they gave you what we expected of them. They uh, they had they sold what needed to be sold. Uh, AJ, I mean not AJ. Wendy sold his knee injury, and to the point where he he we were like, oh oh no. And he's not gonna be able to do it. He got that bum knee, and AJ is working on it, and it was just so good. But then, of course, what we get out of nowhere that RKO just show up and pop out of nowhere, and he just bam, one, two, three, Randy Orton wins the match. And I was so happy because Randy Orton is daddy. I'm just saying, uh, uh, it was definitely an incredible match. Um, I think that it definitely benefited from them having the amount of time they did so that they can really show off what they do mm-hmm. best. Um, the, they are both like masters within the ring, like ring generals within WWE. They both are well-respected, well-rounded. They do what needs to be done every single time they go out there, which is why they have the tenure that they do. And mm-hmm. so with them knowing the amount of time they have going in, they are always going to turn it out and give you a spectacle of a match. And I will never, ever be mad to see these two fight against each other. Um, uh, One thing, I hate AJ's new music still. I really don't like it. It aggravates my spirit. Um, I want, they don't want none. They don't want (laughs) none. Like that is the whitest man in the world, but that music just works, you know? (laughs) It goes hard. And also, Randy's starting to look so much like his daddy. It is, like, jarring to me. I saw him during his <laughs> promo, and I was like, you look just like your daddy. Oh, my God. But, um, yeah, this was an incredible match. I'm not mad at it. Um, I'm happy that Orton got to move forward. AJ just had a title shot, and I don't think really necessarily needs the push of being king of the ring. Um, I think Randy has the opportunity to give us some amazing matches moving forward. I want to see Tamatanga versus Orton. Um, I will be living for that match when it happens. Uh, yeah, just an all around great match, all around great SmackDown. Yeah, it was a good one. I enjoyed it. But like I said, overall, SmackDown was good. I was very entertained throughout the entire time. Um, this match was great, great way to end the show. And um, I can't wait till next week because we got more King of the Ring tournaments and King and Queen of the Ring tournaments, the, the quarterfinals, as they like to call it. Is coming up, and um, we got a couple of matches over the weekend for the tournament, so we'll know by this weekend who else qualified into the King and Queen of the Ring tournament. And um, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll be back next week to talk about it. Do you think that Jade and Bianca are gonna have to fight against each other for this Queen of the Ring? That's what I need to know. I think so. I think they go come to the point, but I don't think it's gonna be to. I think this is going to be the start 
of a shift for their relationship, but, but not enough to make them want to like stop being tag team champions. It's going to be just I like, agree. Okay. It's just, I think they're going to view it as um, like fun competition between friends. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the two of them is winning Queen of the Ring. And I think mm -hmm. it will create a start of a rift between the two of them because one of them is, I think, I will predict now, I think Jade Cargill wins Queen of the Ring. And it's going to cause an ego boost in a way yep. that is going to cause a rift moving forward. I agree. Not right away. I think at first it's going to be fine. But I think at a certain point, Jade will start prioritizing herself when talking about how they are as a team and that mm -hmm. she is going to think less of like, we're sisters supporting each other and be like, I'm the one they come to see. I'm the queen. Yeah. And it's going to cause problems. That's just my thought process. That's how I would book it. So I agree. I think it's going to be little, little stuff, little comments that's going to make mm -hmm. Bianca go. That's going to be like, Girl. Is it true? And it's okay. not going to start right away, but it's going to bubble mm -hmm. up over it's time. Bubble up over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see it. You see the vision. You see, I see the vision. <laughs> I'm with you on the vision. I'm like, yes, work. But I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. I can't wait for it to happen. But who do you think is winning this men's King of the Ring? Do we? Who? Um, honestly, I would love to see Tama Tonga take it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Like, I feel like it's very much up in the air who, who on the men's side could take it. I think that there are a lot of really strong choices. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll see. For me, my favorite to win is Tama. Mm -hmm. But. Anything could happen on the men's side. I think the women's side is more set in stone for me of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. For me, I think it's probably going to be Gunther who's going to win Ooh, on the men's side. Yeah. I think since he lost his Intercontinental Championship, I think Gunther winning the King of the Ring tournament is going to be something. Honestly, and I didn't even think about that. You know what? Mm -hmm. You chewed with that one, Lana. Okay. <laughs> that's what I think. I just think he winning, and that's cool. But and I'm not mad at that. Yeah. I wouldn't be mad at that. I think it'll be well deserved. It'll give him something else to put to his resume and to help boost him up into when he does become world champion someday, like really soon. I think it's gonna happen eventually. So I need him to take it off Cody so these Cody fans could be upset. <laughs> I really do. I mean, he's on Raw, so he would take it off Damien. Oh, what? Oh, right, right. My brain, this draft <laughs> and everything, and I'm just like. Still catching up mentally, but a, I think he, uh, you know, yeah, I think at some point he will. I don't think it will be immediate, probably mm -mm. before the end of the year, though. Yeah, for sure. He's taking this to at some point. I think he he's in next in line for it, but yeah. I think it's either between gonna be Gun Gunther or Jay. I, I think Jay has a really Jay? good shot. I think Jay Uso because I think they're trying to push him up into, and I think him winning King of the Ring would be good or. Money in the bank. I think it either goes. That's how the two people I think are going to win. If Gunther wins King of the Ring, Jay is winning Money in the Bank. If Jay wins Money in the Bank, Gunther is winning King of the Ring. Because I mean, yeah. Back. You know Write it I mean. down, y'all. Lana what? is uh, Lana Damas. Lana, Lana, <laughs> Lana, Lana Damas. Lana Damas <laughs> is happening because that's one of those two are winning because. Gunther is so like deserving and needs to have something to, after the end kind of right. And Jay is yeah. so over. Jay is so over. It would be a crime not to let him get to the point where he can get a single title. So agreed. Yeah. That, one of the two gotta happen, but that's hey, it, y'all. Oh, purr. You know, I try, I try. But you know what else I try to do? We try to be here constantly giving y'all great content every single week. So if you are enjoying our content, hit the subscribe button on your way out and the notification bell. Do all the things. We have four, three other channels. All those links will be in the description link tree below. So go subscribe to all of our channels. We appreciate you. You can follow us on our socials at The Cut Pod or on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you want to follow Amy and myself, you see our stuff down there. Follow us, period. And uh, my Instagram is right there if you want to uh, do all those things. Get your cup merch, period. And that monogscreations.etsy.com. And uh, yeah, that's it. We're going to get out of here. We appreciate you. Anna. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the those who are mothering out there. <laughs>